Greetings. My name is Tau Tau Haramanuba. I'm Grandmaster of the Order of Bagihase. I'm here at Unpopular Opinion, sharing our unpopular opinions. So give thanks. Um, I would like to talk to you about neo-colonialism and neo-African culture, uh, which is basically white colonialism and white and black neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism, um, Kwame Nkrumah defined it as the highest stage of imperialism, which is basically the space that we are existing in as Africans uh, and other nations formerly colonized. But I'd like to speak about us South Africans in that particular context. That uh, neo-colonialism, it reproduce um, uh, 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 Afropians, you know, the poor imitations of the Europeans. Uh, we inherited, basically, the West has always position itself as the one that is teaching us and we as the student. Now the West in teaching us has always produced dichotomies. It has always produced contradictions. Either they give us, they give us Christianity and atheism. They give us capitalism and communism at the same time. So these contradictions, they've brought us into a space where the West decide when is the student ready, uh, when is the student uh, uh, graduated, they qualify and disqualify you. So as a result, we are beholden to the West. Even when we speak of democracy, we speak of something that the West gave us, and uh, in applying it, it's not working. We can't point for you one African country which is a model of a success of democracy. But when we speak of ourselves here, they say we are now in a state of disaster in the area of electricity. But I will say that our state itself is a disaster. It's not a democracy, it's a disaster. So South Africa is a state of disaster uh, as a whole. Uh, we can see that uh, our ruling elite, which now get us to be engaging in uh, fighting for liberation from our liberators, those who claim to have uh, liberated us from apartheid, uh, everything that they have in inherited, they run it down. You know, whether it's the SAA, whether it's ESCOM, we understand that ESCOM was not initially designed for uh, the majority of South Africans, was at first designed for 30% of the population, which was the white population and so forth. But two power stations were subsequently built after that. Um, a lot is happening. People are protesting at Pongola there to try to stop our trucks from taking our coals out of the country and sending it out there. We understand that this is a deliberate move, this thing of load shedding, because now they want to unbundle ESCOM and the president and his uh, family members, they are one of the few people who are having IPPs, you know, independent power pro producing companies, who then have to get into the same space. Again, the same is a Western mindset. You know, they'll always come up with a problem, reaction, solution. So the same people who created problem, they look at your reaction and then they purport to provide solution. So in this case, the problem is load shedding. And then the solution is to unbundle ESCOM and to bring in their own independent power producing. But in between the problem, reaction, solution, what happened to many businesses? What happened to household uh, um, provisions? You know, fridges are off food rot, the price of food is going high, uh, the price of fuel is ever going high. So we're in a state of disaster, uh, truly speaking. And when we don't want to sound like we're apartheid nostalgic, apartheid was a crime against humanity, but this itself also, this uh, neo-apartheid that we are living in within the context of neo-colonialism, uh, it is also not working, it is unworkable. So now the solution we think that is provided for us um, is to do what we're directed, that we need to do uh, what apartheid has done to us, uh, we should do to what this is going on now. First, we explore the means of self-sufficiency. But again, this is a thing. We say, you see, they give you so much load shedding until you begin to adjust. You start to buy load shedding lights. You start to have generators there, generators there. You start to have solar panel, and then from there we accepted this 
state which we will call a stable crisis. You know, this is a crisis that has been stabilized and then they have normalized it and then we are dealing with abnormal normalities. That this thing, it is like, it is okay, it is acceptable, but it's not acceptable, it is adjusting. Again, the same problem with our black educated middle class that uh, eventually um, they don't look for solution for all of us. They look for ways that they themselves will avoid the problem that is affecting the rest of us. Now, we need to go back to the basics. In the 80s, we need to go to the basics. 70s, Steve Bigo talk about this thing. In the 50s, uh, 60s, 40s, 30s, Marcus Gavi talk about this thing, self-reliance, self-sufficient, self-sustenance. Most white people in this country are living outside of government, uh, 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 structures, government welfare, they are self-sustaining, they have their own boreholes, they don't depend on government for water, they have their own electricity generating mechanism, they don't necessarily depend on these things. So we need to do that. We are at that point again that black men, you are on your own. Now since we are on our own, we must self-sufficient, we must self-provide, we must self-cater. And we must understand that as a black race, we have always been at war. Whether models that are imposed on us from the West, they, don't, they are not imposed to serve us. Democracy doesn't serve us. Communism doesn't serve us. Christianity doesn't serve us. Atheism doesn't serve us. Nothing that is imposed from the West is saving us. So in brief, there is no European solution to African problems. So we need to come up with our own solution to our own problems. Thank you so much.